Hey, it's Jeff here, and I am stuck in quarantine trying to find ways to bring more joy to my life and maybe bring some more joy to your life as well. And I've undertaken a spring cleaning, getting rid of the tags that I don't need, cleaning up my Google Tag Manager installation, and focusing on the things that make me joyous, that make me happy. Now, I got this idea from watching Marie Kondo on Netflix and how she says if something brings you joy, keep it. If it doesn't bring you joy, let it go. So I'm going to show you the seven tags that I use on every Google Tag Manager installation, the tags that I use in my business that make me happy, and hopefully they can make you happy too. As you are coming off quarantine, staying quarantined, whatever your situation is, I'm sorry to hear about it. I had a bad situation, but you know what? I'm trying to turn it into lemonade instead of lemons, and I'm focusing on the things that bring me joy. So check it out. You are not going to want to miss the seven tags that bring me joy with Google Tag Manager. Seven must-have GTM tags for your website. In this video, we're going to answer the question, what are the tags that you recommend go into every Google Tag Manager installation, especially for somebody who's really into marketing and tracking their marketing activities? And as I get into this video, I'm going to make some assumptions for you. I'm not going to repeat things I have said in other videos that I've published on my YouTube channel. I'm going to assume that, number one, you already know what GTM is. And if not, then you have taken our GTM tutorial and learned about what the platform can do for you and learned a lot of the basics. And you're coming into this with some knowledge of what's going on there. And if you haven't had a chance to watch that video yet, I highly recommend that you go check it out at datadrivenu.com slash Google dash tag manager tutorial. Yes, there are dashes in every URL and you can click on the link if easier on your YouTube video review page. Next, I'm going to assume that you have GTM installed on your website already. And if you don't have GTM installed, we do have a handy guide for installing it in your WordPress website in five minutes or less. And so if you want to get it installed onto your site, I'd highly recommend checking this out. And here's the URL for that as well. And again, we'll be linking to that in the video description for you too. Number three, you're watching this video just to make sure you didn't miss anything obvious when it came to tagging your website. And number four, after sitting at home on quarantine for a few months, you might be ready for some tidying up of your stuff. You might be ready to tidy things up. You might be getting a little restless or antsy, or maybe you're just coming off of quarantine, whatever it is. I recorded this in advance while I was on quarantine. And so, yes, I'm looking to do some spring cleaning. I'm looking to tidy up myself. And so I'm going to make that assumption about you too. Okay, sound good? Let's get started. First of all, there's so many options and so little time when it comes to GTM. Now, you might not know this already, but GTM has a pre-built library of 70 plus tag templates, which means you just put in some values into these tags and they are good to go 70 or more of them with different platforms. Now, you might be asking yourself, do I need them all? Do I need every one of these platforms, these tags? What if I don't know what it does? Should I investigate it? Should I look into it? That is a good question to ask, and I'm going to help you understand what you should do very shortly here. So how do you know what tags you really need? Well, when you're thinking about what you can track, ask yourself the condo question. What is the condo question? The condo question comes from Marie Kondo, who has a show on Netflix that I really enjoy, although it makes me feel a little bit antsy sometimes, especially on quarantine. That is, does this item bring you joy? Basically, take an item that you've had sitting around your house or sitting around, put it into your hands and say, does this thing bring me joy? And if it doesn't, you got to get rid of it. If it does bring you joy, you keep it and you go forward, okay? And so if your tag sparks joy, then make sure it's on your site. If I'm telling you about something here and you're like, yeah, that sounds so cool, I wanna track that, then I would highly recommend adding it to your site. Now, on the other hand, if you see the tags that are mentioned in the 70 plus tag templates on Google Tag Manager and it overwhelms you or frustrates you and doesn't bring you joy, then you do what Marie Kondo recommends as well. You say, thank you for your service, thank you for your time, but I no longer need you, I am ready to let you go. Let things go and it makes you feel a lot better and spring cleaning is all about that. The Marie Kondo method is all about that. And you know what? There's no shame in watching shows about organizing closets if it brings you joy. And so I'm not gonna let anybody bring me down or hate on me for watching that show. It did bring me joy. Okay, so I wanna get right into the meat of this thing and I'm gonna share with you seven must-have tracking tags that bring joy to me when it comes to installing things through Google Tag Manager or other means on my website. Number one, getting Google Analytics on your site. Now, if you've watched any one of my videos before, if you've ever heard of me before, you know that I'm obsessed and in love with Google Analytics at the same time. And so, yeah, it's going to be number one. It's always number one. And I'm just going to show you quickly how you can get Google Analytics on your site, especially using this thing called a settings variable, which is a way to make sure your Google Analytics install is consistent every time you do it. And so here I am in Google Tag Manager on the Jefflytics website. And as you can see here, I have Google Analytics on there. I actually have it tons of times in my account. Um, all kinds of stuff. It all comes from my done-for-you Google Tag Manager container, 
with things like video view tracking and event tracking automatically in there, something that's only available in our Google Tag Manager Mastery course. But anyways, I have the install. I use it on my own site. This is something that we, I said, give away in our Tag Manager Mastery course with all the tags that I recommend putting it onto your site. And so you can see here, here's my primary analytics. I have a page view track, which shows up on all pages of my site. Very standard, very vanilla Google Analytics. We even talked about it in our five minute WordPress install, how easy it is to do. And the thing you wanna to do to set yourself apart is to make sure you have this Google Analytics primary settings variable. And the settings variable allows you to put in things like your tracking ID and any advanced settings you have. Now in my primary settings, I actually do stuff like cross domain tracking and some other things around e-commerce and custom dimensions. I do a lot in my advanced settings because I am an advanced user and I do a lot of tracking across multiple sites within the same Google Analytics account or within the same property. And so I have a pretty advanced Google Analytics settings variable, but at the very least, you're gonna to wanna to set this variable up and have your Google Analytics setting in place. And so that is tag number one, and I'm gonna keep it short and sweet, and we're gonna move on to the next step. Next, your email marketing analytics. This is one of those ones that's a little bit of a false positive because I don't use email marketing analytics through my Google Tag Manager account. And that's because my email marketing platform and the several platforms I had before it, they all have a plugin that works with WordPress and I can just get it to work right on my site without installing it through Tag Manager. And so I use ConvertKit at the moment, I use Drip previous to that, and they both have plugins for WordPress websites. And so while I've retired my email marketing usage through GTM, I just wanted to bring it to your attention because a lot of people don't know that their email marketing platforms actually have an analytics tag that you can install on your site and get some information about what happens after that open and that click on an email. And so it's really vital if you wanna have redundancy in your near analytics to have email tracking on your site you don't usually think of email and analytics or email being an analytics tool, but I'll tell you that almost every single modern email service platform has some kind of tagging you can put on your site. And it becomes very important if you wanna know what happened and by how much. And so the way that you can do that is going into your site, adding a new tag. We're gonna call this one a new HTML tag, new custom HTML tag, and then you'd put the code provided by your email marketing platform. Now, I'm not even gonna get into showing you my email marketing platform, mostly because it's on WordPress, but also I don't wanna confuse you by saying, here's the only way that you can do this because you might be on MailChimp, you might be on any number of different email platforms, and so your results are gonna be different than mine, and I don't wanna steer you in the direction of thinking it has to be the same code that you see on the screen. And so if you do have questions about your email marketing software, do let us know in the comments and we can do our best to answer it for you. But in general, what I'm gonna tell you is this, and that is that if the email platform is worthwhile, they will either have a template inside here or you can use the custom HTML to make that work for you. So even though I'm not going into great detail on email marketing, trust me, it is worthwhile to track the email marketing analytics. And if nothing else, consider this a public service announcement that it's important and that you should be paying attention to it. Next, remarketing. Remarketing is the lowest hanging fruit of any activity you can do when it comes to online advertising. And so you wanna make sure you put pixels onto your site, at least the Facebook and the Google one, so you can then go and send ads or show ads to people who were on your site previously. And so if your website has any commercial intent or if it exists in order to sell customers on your product or service, then remarketing is a good way to re-engage somebody who maybe went to your site, browsed around, and then either got busy or left and they haven't seen your latest email, whatever it is, remarketing is a great way to get in front of them. And to add these pixels, it's pretty straightforward. And so you can see on here, I have my Facebook pixel. It is a custom HTML tag and I have all the details in here. And every time that a page view loads, I am sending that data to Facebook and creating an audience that I can remarket to. Now there's a lot more you can do as far as the Facebook pixel. I have a whole container a GTM container just for Facebook Pixel items that you could use and import into your system if you wanted to. It's something that we make available in our Facebook Ads Mastery course. And the reason why we have that container available is because it gets really complex really fast. You can have this base pixel in place, but then if you want to get to the point where you're doing specific lead tracking or purchase tracking, you wanna have these pixel events configured and it's gonna take even more work. And so I'm starting with the basic thing you can do, which is to put the code that Facebook provides you, the HTML code, paste it into here and have it show up on all pages, and then you are good to go when it comes to the tracking pixel. And that's how we work in our installation. And again, we're using our own dog food. We're using our own containers to make this work. The other one we have in place, as you can see, is the Google Ads Remarketing Audience Tag. And that's just keeping track of the people who have visited the site so we can remarket to them later based on their activity. 
And so these two pixels are in place. They're pretty straightforward to do. This one's actually very easy to set up. All you need is a conversion ID and you are good to go. Make sure you add these remarketing tags to your site so you can collect an audience. And just like email, it's one of the lowest hanging fruit you can do. One of the least expensive ways to drive a new customer to your site. And frankly, some people don't even know that you can do it, but you can basically have the mimicry or mimic the effectiveness of an email campaign for a very low expense using remarketing. And it all starts with doing that remarketing pixel. Number four, having visitor analytics in place on your site. Now, Lead Feeder is a system that I love and I've used for a long time, but there's actually been some recent changes to Google Analytics that basically broke how it works. And I was too busy doing other things and I didn't go ahead and install the fix to make it work. But basically what Lead Feeder does is it tells you who went to your website and it tells you who works at that company so you can engage them and try to sell them on your products or services. And so if you're B2B, it's especially important to install a lead feeder and see what it can do for you. So I highly recommend this tool that you check it out. And I'm going to show you now how I can get the fix for lead feeder on my site. And so here's an article about it. We'll link out to you to show you what the problem is. And then if I go into my account, it says that I need to set up my tracker script. And here it says Google Tag Manager. You can install it on your site. And so if you create a lead feeder account, copy this to your clipboard and you're gonna do it as a custom HTML tag in the head section of your website on every page. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna create a new tag. And I'm gonna say here, I want to create a tag for lead feeder. I'm gonna say for Jeffalytics. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna choose a custom HTML tag. Put that in place right there and it says that it wants it to happen on every single page so i'm just going to go with all pages i'm going to save that and i'm going to preview and i'm going to preview and if i hit preview here it's going to give me the preview mode i'm going to go back to an article on my blog or just my home page and just make sure that this is tag is firing so as you can see here and so as you see here, I have Jefflytics lead feeder new tag, as well as a bunch of other tags that I'm gonna talk about, maybe burying the lead a little bit in our seven tags, but a lot of stuff that I have running on my site. And so this is in place. It looks like it's working properly. I'm gonna publish these changes. I'm gonna publish this for us. And I'm just gonna go into lead feeder and I'm just gonna double check and see if this is working properly. So is this working now? Let's go in. And let's see, it says not receiving data, but we'll just do a check in a little bit towards the end of this video, perhaps, and see if that's gonna work. I'm gonna leave our preview mode and just see if it's working. So you need to obviously send some data for them to track it. Now I'm sending data by refreshing the site and we'll see if they are receiving the data or how quickly they can respond to what I'm doing here. So it looks like they are seeing events now, finally. And I think the tracker is gonna be receiving data very quickly here. So that's the solution to our problem with Lead Feeder. And I highly recommend that you check out Lead Feeder. It is something that for B2B companies, it's really incredible. So check it out. Number five, you wanna have some customer behavior analytics, like heat mapping and tracking what happens on your site. So if we go back to our tag manager, you can see here, I have something called Crazy Egg in place and I have something called Hot Jar in place. And so Crazy Egg is a tag template for Crazy Egg. All you need to do is put in your account number and it will start tracking for you automatically. Now, the reason why I like Crazy Egg as well as Hotjar is that they give you some really beautiful reports that show you what people are doing on your site. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like once this is installed and you collect data using the Crazy Egg system. And so here we are on a page that had quite a bit of traffic for one of our sites for our Facebook ads course. And as you can see with this confetti, we can see where people are paying attention, what they're looking at, what they're doing in their account. We can see how far they scroll on our page and you can make some decisions based on what people are doing. So you can see here, we made some decisions around how long it should be, a lot of stuff around the quality and the length of our page based on what we see in these reports. And so Hotjar has a free version. Crazy Egg is a paid tool, but I really enjoy it and have been with them for years. And the reason why I recommend using them is because this is data that's not available in Google Analytics or anywhere else. The other reason why I recommend it is because it's as simple as putting in your account number and getting data right away. So if you wanna have very valuable and interesting data, but you don't wanna really mess around with code, Crazy Egg is a great way to do it, same with Hotjar. Next, we have YouTube video views. Now, the cool thing about Google Tag Manager and YouTube is that they have a native 
trigger that allows you to track things that are happening with YouTube video views. And so if we go back into Tag Manager, we can do a trigger here and we can say, I wanna create a new trigger and it's gonna be, let's call it the YouTube trigger. And you can see within this section here, the YouTube video, you can say, I wanna track whenever somebody starts it, when they complete it. You can even say what their progress is. I wanna track it when they're 25% of the way through, when they're 50%, when they're 75%, and I want that to all go into Google Analytics. So you create that trigger, and then you create an event tag from Google Analytics, and this just works for you. And this is something that everybody should be putting in place. It is the one of the four tags, the four auto event tags that I recommend that every Google Analytics installation has. And I do have a video about that that you might want to check out and see what the other recommendations are. But YouTube is right up there because most people are embedding YouTube videos on their site. As I can show you from my own blog, every one of the articles that I link out to has a YouTube video. And I want to be able to track what's happening on these videos. And the way that I do that is through this YouTube trigger right here. So I can track when they hit start, when they watch the video, and how far they get all right on my site. Every time that somebody clicks on it, I can track all that good stuff. I can track if they make it to the end of it. I can do all that simply by adding this trigger for YouTube. It's very easy to do. It's something that I've already given a video tutorial on as well. And so make sure you check that out in the notes on our website right up and on YouTube to get that information about how you can do this for yourself. And the final tag, probably the most overlooked tag that I recommend that you add is a help desk software or some kind of engagement where you can chat with somebody as a widget on your site something that you see on a lot of different websites, but it's either you have it or you don't. And a lot of companies don't even know they can do that or haven't thought about it. And we've done this on our site with Beacons using a tool called Help Scout. And then we use GTM to set the rules on what pages they show up on. So not every page has the same beacon. And the way that we do that is through GTM and rules and triggers. So let me show you what it looks like. First of all, I'm gonna show you on the Jefflytics website. You can see this little beacon here that says, how can Jefflytics help you? That is a tag that goes up on every single page of our website and it gives you the opportunity to send a ticket or to ask us questions and answers. So we spent a lot of time putting this knowledge base together, letting people know what we can help them with and just giving them knowledge they need, asking questions right on this beacon. And we get people asking us all the time, whatever they need to ask us about, let's put it that way. And so they put it in place. And the way that this gets triggered is through this thing called the Help Scout Beacon. And we're just taking the HTML code once again that they provide us, putting it in here, having it show up on all pages. And then we also make exceptions for where it doesn't show up. So we had a campaign for this Facebook ads calculator and it was sort of bunching up on top of the page. So we just had it removed from that page and we do that a lot within the My Data Driven platform. And we can flip back and forth between what beacon shows up. We can do a customer beacon versus a prospective customer beacon. And that helps people just give them more signal, less noise as far as what do they wanna answer. So the customers, they get treated differently than a non-customer or they get something that says, okay, we know you're a customer, so ask questions about what you bought versus if you're a non-customer, it's basically saying, okay, we'll ask a question about what you might purchase in the future. And so there's a distinction and a difference and we're able to use these rules to say, say this shows up for some people and not for other people. And so if you've been frustrated by these beacons and saying they're irrelevant, that's where these rules can come in place. And so I would highly recommend that you at least consider one for your help desk software to have common questions answered or give somebody a chance to contact you. It's a lot easier than going through and clicking on your contact page and filling out a form, a lot more immediate, a lot more recent. And that's why I added it to my seven vital tags that you should be running within Google Tag Manager. And so that's it. That's the seven tags that I wanted to show you. And I hope that you enjoy this information and the reasoning why we do it the way that we do it. And hopefully this helps you out as well. And so to summarize this video, you have hundreds of options of tags that you can choose for your site. Focus on those that bring you the most potential joy, not on those that clutter your life. Not every platform has native tags on GTM, but as you can see, you can still add the code through a custom HTML tag and that's something that I do very often because I use some platforms that are either obscure or they just don't see the value in adding it to Google Tag Manager. But oftentimes you'll see that they do have plugins for major CMSs like WordPress. And if you don't have these seven tags already, you may wanna consider investing in that software or using these tools because they add something that Google Analytics alone can't do, that your ad platform pixels can't do. They each add something of unique value that I think is worth the effort. And that's why I put the effort in to show you what they look like. And finally, enjoy your tag spring cleaning. Now is the time to let go of things that don't bring you joy and hopefully seeing my seven favorite tags really helps you get on the path to finding joy and finding zen in what you do with your tag management. Mm -hmm.